Rick Scattery of the Heisman Trophy race continues to evolve, with tailback Saquon Barkley Penn State and Bryce Love Stanford the most discussed candidates. Barkley has versatility and a starring role on a national title contender in his favor Love is the featured back of a team eager to run over as many opponents as it can. Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma State's Mason Rudolph remain in the conversation, too. But the best player in the country this month that's simultaneously both easy and unexpected. Arizona quarterback Khalil Tate is 20 of 25 passing for 290 yards and two touchdowns over the past two weekends, some exceptionally efficient work. Yet it appears modest compared to his silly rushing numbers 29 carries for 557 yards and six touchdowns. That's a Tecmo Bowl-like 19.2 yards per carry in October for the sophomore, who has led Arizona 42-21 Pac-12 to victories over Colorado and UCLA. His role became prominent only after starter Brandon Dawkins was injured on the opening drive two weeks ago. Needless to say, it's prompted the question of where Tate has been all year. A bit banged up, for starters, though he came off the bench in two games in September. When he got his opportunity, he made the most of it, Coach Rich Rodriguez told reporters this week as Arizona prepared to visit California on Saturday. He is actually playing better than we anticipated that he would, particularly running-wise. You think the upshot of Tate's star turn is that, Rodriguez has gone from a popular target for hot seat chatter the Wildcats regressed from 104-76-39 to 76 to 39 over the last three seasons to coaching the team perhaps best equipped to rest the Pac-12 south away from Southern California. In the bag for the Badgers the surest thing to come out of the first half of the season is a Big Ten West title for Wisconsin, which is starting to border on inevitable. If the 16 divisions at the FBS level 8 of the 10 leagues are split in two, only the Badgers are up two games in the loss column on everyone else. Wisconsin 60-30 already owns a head-to-head -head tiebreaker on three of the four teams with two league defeats in the Big Ten West the exception is Iowa. The remaining schedule is manageable, with the two toughest games Iowa and Michigan at home. The Badgers' other four remaining opponents are a combined 11-13 and a dreadful 111 in conference play. The victory came when Maryland defeated Minnesota. The numbers suggest the traditional truths about the Badgers. Their defense is number four nationally against the run 78.8 yards per game, number five in points allowed 13.3 per game and number six in total yards yielded 265 per contest. The typical Wisconsin power running attack is led by freshman star Jonathan Taylor, who enters Saturday's visit from Maryland with 986 rushing yards. As good as Wisconsin is, it ISNT especially accomplished. None of its first six opponents owns a winning record. That won't matter to Badgers fans, who should feel good about booking a couple of hotel nights in Indianapolis for the first week in December. It is unlikely Paul Christ's team will slip up enough to be denied the trip. Purdue coach Jeff Brum LG. Patterson app stability is not a hallmark of the college football coaching fraternity. Between the start of last season and late July of this year, 22 FBS schools experienced changes at the top of their programs. That's roughly one in six. While athletic directors love to win the news conference, it's difficult to fully assess. Most hires immediately after they are made though, some puzzling choices are quickly identifiable. A half-season doesn't provide a much better snapshot, but there is at least some evidence on where a program is headed. It's unfair at the midpoint of the 2017 season to heap scorn upon coaches who took over difficult situations San Jose State's Brent Brennan and Connecticut's Randy Edsel come to mind. And it's important to size up the remaining schedule and realize teams off to slow starts could turn things around. Luke Fickle's first Cincinnati team is 25, but the Bearcats still have Connecticut, East Carolina, Temple and Tulane to come. For better or worse, the work of these six coaches stands out at the midpoint of the regular season. Two that have worked Jeff Brom, Purdue the Boilermakers were a dead-end program for the past decade, mustering two bull bids in the previous ten years and going 330 in the Big Ten over the past four seasons. But Brom has brought a definite spark to West Lafayette, and Purdue 33-12 has largely played well even in losses to Louisville, Michigan and Wisconsin. Given the state of the Big Ten West, Brom will probably coax a postseason appearance out of the Boilermakers this season. It would be their first since 2012. Charlie Strong, South Florida In some cases, it's best to think in the short term while making a coaching hire. The Bulls were poised to contend for the group of five slot in the New Year's six games with a tested roster. Strong, who had a lauded run at Louisville before his three-year stint at Texas, was freshly available. It seemed like a good fit. 
Sure enough, South Florida 60, 30 American is undefeated, though there were some touch-and-go moments in the Bulls' first couple games. The offense is different, Quinton Flowers ISNT going to run for 1,500 yards again, for starters, but the team is a contender, and Strong could again be a top candidate when some notable drops perhaps in the Southeastern Conference open in the next couple months. Two that are back from Purgatory Butch Davis, Florida International Someone should check if the Panthers are working with a Rolodex from the 1990s, considering Ron Turner began last season as head coach and Ron Cooper took over on an interim basis. Now comes Davis, whose last head coaching gig North Carolina came to an end before the 2011 season. But Davis knows the South Florida region from his time at Miami and engineered an exceptional rebuild of the Hurricanes program. Florida International is 42 in his first season, matching their victory total from all of 2016. Jeff Tedford, Fresno State Tedford sputtered to the end of his 11-year run at California when he ran out of NFL-caliber quarterbacks and running backs. While familiar with Fresno State he was the Bulldogs' offensive coordinator during the Trent Dilfer years, it seemed an odd choice when Fresno State hired him last year. The early returns are exceptional. Fresno State 42, 30 Mountain West is much improved from last year's 111 disaster thanks in part to Oregon State transfer QB Marcus McMarion, and the Bulldogs will be on track to win a division title if they can knock off San Diego State on Saturday. Two with work to do Jane Norville, Nevada Brian Polian departed Reno after a 2,327 showing over four seasons. Not great by any stretch, but better than the 16 mark the Wolf Pack has posted under the first-time head coach. Nevada HASNT won more than seven games in a season since 2010, when it went 131 during Colin Kaepernick's senior year. Clearly, expectations for the Wolf Pack should NT be too out of whack. But it also HASNT lost more than eight games since going 210 in 2000, and that's very much in play at the start of Norville's rebuilding gig. Matt Rule, Baylor never has the phrase change the culture meant as much to a football program, and by all accounts Rule is handling everything in that area with grace. It's understandably how he was going to be judged early in his stint with the Bears. It was also assumed Baylor would do well against a non-conference schedule of Liberty, Texas on Antonio and Duke before trying to pick off some teams in the bottom half of the Big 12. Instead, the Bears are 0-6. The Bears' problems go far beyond wins and losses, and there should NT be grumbling in Waco over this reset season. Still, Rule is facing an even more challenging task than most expected. Penn State's Soquin Barkley, right John McDonald Washington Post 5 games to watch Number 10 Oklahoma State at Texas Saturday, noon, ABC since losing its opener to Maryland, Texas 33-21 Big 12 has stifled Iowa State, upended Kansas State in overtime and challenged Oklahoma and Southern California. Not bad. Now, the Longhorns get QB Mason Rudolph and Oklahoma State 51-21 at home in the top Big 12 game of the week. Tennessee at number 1 Alabama Saturday, 3.30 p.m. CBS The Crimson Tide 70-40 SEC will look to match its longest winning streak in its third Saturday in October series, 11 games, when it entertains Butch Jonas fading volunteers 33-03. Number 20 Central Florida at Navy Saturday, 3.30 p.m. CBS Sports Network A little bit of the sizzle went out of this game when Navy lost at Memphis last week. But the midshipmen 51-31 American are still a factor in the West Division and will need to take better care of the ball as Mackenzie Milton and the Knights 50-20 come to Annapolis. Number 19 Michigan at Number 2 Penn State Saturday, 7.30 p.m. ABC The Nittany Lions 60-30 Big 10, fresh off their bye week, lead the country in scoring defense 9.0 points per game. Michigan 51-21 is anything but an offensive dynamo. If Barkley and Penn State can stitch together three touchdown drives, no easy task against Don Brown's defense, they should be in solid shape. Number 11 Southern California at number 13 Notre Dame Saturday, 7.30 p.m. NBC This might be the last ranked team the Trojan 61 face before a potential Pac-12 title game appearance. As for Notre Dame, 51, this is the start of the brutal second half of its schedule which also features Miami, Navy, NC State and Stanford. More college football perspective for playoff contenders, there are no bad losses, only good wins not so fast, my friend a stroke couldn't rob Lee Corso of game day two standouts could have left Virginia at a low point. They returned for a revival. As Tennessee football slides, fire Butch Jones threatens to drown out Rocky Top analysis Ohio State controls its playoff fate after a weekend of upsets.